wasting all of their damn what, what are what you the? doing master what is assassin the? you have made what? the greatest mistake of your life <laughs> can you beat total war warhammer 3 using only heroes from what i've seen i'm gonna say the answer is yes because some of these lords and heroes get pretty busted one lizard one frog, 5,903 rats, and a dream. <laughs> Total Warhammer 3, a game with hundreds yeah, of unique units Lord that Croak we're not using. Because today, we're seeing everything. if you can beat the game with heroes only. That means no infantry, no cavalry, no monsters, and no 99% of the roster. Only mm. heroes. So getting into the game, our campaign is of course going to be the Immortal Empires campaign. And out of all the different factions we could go with for a heroes only challenge, we're going to go with the Lizardmen, who do have a pretty Hell significant yeah. of very strong legendary lords, and we are going to go with Gorok. But before we get into the video, a word from a very special sponsor, uh, Display, here we go. with unique metal posters, oh, and Display. now featuring Warhammer designs. I feel like Display metal is poster actually a isn't just sturdy, pretty it's decent sponsor. It's great for fighting off armed intruders, Looks but cool. light enough that you don't need to be forklift certified. The process to hang them requires no power tools, no nails, and no work-related <laughs> accidents. Probably. First, find a good spot for your poster. Personally, I like the bathroom mirror, letting me wake up and self-actualize. Just peel off the sticker, <laughs> put it on the wall, add the magnet, and great, you did it! It works like witchcraft, but instead of heresy, it's powered by my undying loyalty to the Imperium. If you make a mistake installing it, don't worry, <laughs> the posters are easy. Oh, just man. now, whenever I'm feeling down, I just look to my left and remember, it could always be worse. There's a pretty insane amount of different designs, like this Fallout New Vegas poster and Frostpunk title recreation. So, use my code CLEEPER to get a discount on all designs until November 29th. But act quickly with delivery in only November four to five 29th, days. What and, year? Uh, don't keep the Empire <laughs> this waiting. This is definitely okay, way past this time. Back to uh, oh, Town. So loading animation. into the campaign itself and getting onto the map, there's amazing. a very specific reason that we chose Gorok, and that would be his best friend, a dead frog. Because we are yes. doing a heroes only run, that means that at the very start of this campaign, you see all these really Get great Saurus unit skinks. Oh, a Bastilodon with a revivification crystal. Yeah, no, we can't can't use any of that. So now our army is literally just Gorok. And we are also going to put Lord Croak in there because Lord Croak is absolutely insane. Because Lord Croak mm -hmm. starts with all of his legendary items and is one of the best spellcasters in the entire game. So as well yeah, I, I don't know. Like, the fact that Gorok starts out with Lord Croak like this just makes his start much easier than all the other Lizardmen, from what I understand. Unless if Mazda Mundi himself can dish out as much damage. But like, you also have the added benefit of Mazda Mundi. Yeah, he's a slant mage and whatnot. But Gorok is also a literal tank who can probably just face tank most of every battle. So like, huh? Every single time I watch a, a Grim Cleeper video, he's kind of had to auto resolve against Gorok. <laughs> because the man just won't die. That's just what he doesn't do. Much as I know this fight is probably not going to look so great for us. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, we're fighting an entire army with literally two units. Two it's people, actually yeah. not nearly as bad as it seems. Gorok himself has pretty much only one ability, and it is the fact that he is absurdly tanky. Right now, he has mm. pretty reasonably good stats. I mean, 100 armor, 60 melee defense, and because he's just a very small person, it's hard to kill him. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I say small. He's uh, he's actually ginormous. Lord Croak, on the other hand, is uh, essentially a, a dead frog. A salon mage priest who is so powerful that when he died he simply decided to not be dead uh, and then yep. resurrected himself it's gonna be a pretty common theme that in our battles it is a uh, two versus 245 and that's probably the Some best so in odds it's going to be for the rest of the game the thing that makes lord croak so powerful is he really only has three spells the deliverance of Ito one two and three and i will show you in just a second what they actually do because mm. right now gorok is just going to run around and fight people that's it and if you didn't <laughs> think he was tanky uh he gets four 40% physical resistance. Ooh, damn. Yeah. Uh, from what you guys have told me, though, the spell that Lord Croak gets, it's the same spell. It just does more damage. And it doesn't do any damage to ally units, which makes it really, really good when you can clump up enemy units around Gorok. But the fact that you can just keep on stacking abilities like this to make it so that Gorok becomes even more and more tanky is just, yeah. Well, I guess he kind of falls off when it comes to the damage part, right? But you got Lord Croak to do that. And as long as nobody gets the Lord Croak, you should be a okay.
resistance. And then Lord Crow can also give him 40% more damage resistance. What? So now that Gorok has pretty much got everybody into one big blob, we can use Lord Crow over just there to just up. completely nuke everybody in the area. So in pretty much one spell, he has almost killed all the units over here. And because Gorok is so tanky, we can just leave him in the fight for pretty much an unlimited amount of time and he will not die. So the first spell we used was Deliverance of Eats of Three, and that's like yeah, the most that. powerful version. Gorok so right is barely here, this taking is the first any damage. One, and it does a pretty moderate amount of damage. Moderate, oh god, yeah. no. Nurgle's realizing that we're just yeah. walking Lord Croak over here and now all these toads are after us. Lord Croak himself is not actually that tanky, <laughs> but he is unbreakable, so he'll never route. And, uh, you know, the fact that he okay. just launched That's nuclear good. bombs. Okay, that was that was pretty good. <laughs> Meanwhile, Gorok is pretty much just going to single-handedly kill all of these units because he is just that tanky. And now the rest of the battle is pretty much just be fast-forwarding while Gorok beats the crap out of this Nurgle follower over here. Here. Is it a close fight? Uh, no, not uh, really. The bad no. is it might Dude, like how busted is this? It's such an OP start. You do not want to run into Gorok early game, I'm sure. Or even late game. Late game is probably even worse. So how do you even deal with this if you're playing like a different faction? But you guys have said that multiplayer is a, a lot more balanced. So I, I don't really know exactly how this would be balanced in multiplayer. If you guys know, let me know, but it just seems unfair if you pick Gorok in any game, which I, I likely will, because I, I don't know how to play the game. <laughs> I need all the help I can get. It seemed that our units are now almost completely dead. Uh, the best thing we can do is yeah, immediately happens. walk over here to fight the next garrison. In yeah, terms of uh -huh. level ups, it's actually going to be very <laughs> weird because since we're going with heroes only, these bottom two branches, which are normally the ones that you want to go with almost always, completely don't matter. Oh, most really? of these buffs don't okay. affect heroes. Uh, most of these buffs don't really affect heroes. And so the main things that we want are all these top ones, which basically just make Gorog better at fighting people. Because our mm, boy over here gotcha. is going to become the tankiest lizard in the entire world or interesting i wonder how you would manage this if you were playing a normal campaign so i suppose if you wanted you should probably go for the lower bar since that would kind of like help boost what i, I saw there maybe like your region maybe your troops and uh, that would kind of play into the well rts aspect of everything but you could also instead choose to upgrade your heroes and stuff which maybe you would want to save for later and i guess it all really depends on how you plan on playing the game and like which units you want to focus on croak on the other hand pretty much just gets sure stronger in terms of spell though. casting we can reduce the winds of magic cost for most of his spells and and just make him Should generally insane that. he also gets yeah. regeneration at some point and uh even gorok gets regeneration i think a little bit like yeah okay that's that's kind of the great way oh way, my god walk over here to the <laughs> was that battle healing cap plus 100 percent? you can heal twice the amount of damage that everybody else in the game can i'm sure there are other lords who can probably do that or maybe even more but yeah that's insane the next garrison and you know crushing defeat the game seems to think yeah, we're gonna lose sense. this you know with our two almost dead heroes you're not just wrong you're stupid the last time we did bomb rush the enemy uh and we're just not gonna do that i am going to sit here we're for the next chill? three minutes Regen? and wait until my winds of magic gets maxed because i have no uh... reason to move this seems okay, like a lot great. of fun. This has been an exhilarating <laughs> seven minutes of the fight. All right, unfortunately, they're all trying to surround Lord Croak, but I should be able to just, yeah, just Kai blast yeah. them into oblivion. And because my mana is essentially maxed, I can just then do it again and kill almost the entire Nurgle army in two spells. Oh my God, we're already winning the fight. Dude, okay, actually, yeah, yeah. I, I was right. <laughs> we won the fight in two spells. Well, that was what completely broken. What the hell, dude, Lord Croak? If you Croak? haven't realized by this point, melee infantry are essentially no problem to us because Gorok just tanks everything and and then Ranged. Lord Croak just literally kills everyone. Right, so now that our first turn in terms of battles is done, we can look at the other most interesting part of this, which is our buildings. Because we're only using heroes, most of the buildings in the game really don't matter. So, for example, this one, which trains dinosaurs, we don't care because it doesn't mm, give us any benefit any in terms of training heroes. The other thing that really doesn't matter all that much is money. So right here, we could build a gold mine, but as the first thing we build instead, I want it to be a spawning pool in order to get skink chiefs. Okay, well, we did get so kind get of unlucky, heroes. but it isn't the end of the world. The problem is that when we kill the first army, the second army that spawns is always this great unclean one, and fighting a great unclean one with only two heroes is very hard. What we do have to do is sit out here a couple of turns in channeling stance to get more winds of magic, and then we channeling can walk over stance. here. Channeling stance? 
Well, that's a, a new stance. Maybe it's a unique stance for the Lizardmen, potentially. Or maybe it's a unique stance for, like, magic-based armies, maybe? Maybe it just makes you more vulnerable to attack while giving you more magic in return. Something like that and try and fight him. Because Nurgle's faction mechanics in terms of recruiting are very weird, we do get to just sit here for multiple turns in a row, and he's never going to recruit any units because he has to wait a long time for them. The end result really? is that I have waited here for seven turns just channeling power. So now that I've waited long enough, I can recruit <laughs> okay. a skink chief. We can get Ojo Oxodle. Two X's in a row? Really? But we can walk oh, yeah. up to this and begin to encircle the city, then get our skink chief over you here too. City with two the people? Army. The thing that makes Skink Chief so insanely strong is because at higher levels, they get Stegodons and Ancient Ooh. Stegodon mounts, which are massive dinosaurs. And because we can get very access nice. to Skink Chiefs very easily and increase our hero capacity for Skink Chiefs in basically every single city we capture, our armies are just going to be like 19 Skink Chiefs. So now we can try and fight this out. It's it's still not very favored, but we might be able to do it. <laughs> and as always, uh, time to wait for five minutes yeah, while my Winds of Magic goes up to 100 freaking yeah we turn this game into a muso game oh my god <laughs> oh man we're really doing that retention editing aren't we this is big brain <laughs> maybe i should do that too i don't know no, 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 I ain't doing that. Forward, or else I would be sitting here for, I think, 12 minutes. I have half a mind to just go and get some food from my fridge, but, but a lot like this Honestly? guy, I'm uh, too lazy to get up. 14 minutes later, and <laughs> <laughs> we finished. I'm sure our okay, boy yeah, is just sitting over here being a, a, a little impatient. Okay, so now we can get mm. everybody all locked into... I wonder why the AI doesn't just come over to attack you. I suppose if you're the attacking faction, it's best for the AI or programmed in the AI to like take up a defensive position using terrain and whatnot. Actually, somebody did mention that terrain isn't really a, as big of a factor anymore in Total War Warhammer 3 as it used to be in the previous Warhammer games, which uh, I, I think is very unfortunate. But uh, yeah, confirm or deny that. I, I don't know. There was just one comment about that, so I'm not too sure. But yeah, I mean, it, it's interesting that the AI would just let you do that. Maybe the AI is just not very fine-tuned, as we've seen in the Mandalore's video, too. To one area, which is great for us. Gink Priests do have a ranged attack, and we're going to try to use it on Methanian, but oh, I'm not entirely sure if it's going to do a lot of damage to his 12,000 health fat belly. Yeah. That man has got mass. Oh my god, Lord Croak is just walking and punting everybody out of the way. He's pretty big himself. Now, while Nurgle may, of course, have many care. layers of fat, we have, you know, our magical nuclear bombs. Korok <laughs> is just continuing to tank like a champion while we keep detonating bombs right on top of his head, which I mean, you know, props to him. And our skin I mean, chief is just running away from poor Gorok. little, well, not little, Methanian. Ah, uh, yes, I feel like I've seen this somewhere before, probably on hentai. All right, finally, oh we've killed pretty much all the other Nurgle units, and it's just- Grim Cleaver, also a man of culture. I see you. <laughs> Bethanian versus Gorok, which I honestly, I think Gorok wins that fight. It probably helps that our skink chief probably. is just continuously shooting blow darts right between Bethanian's cheeks. Specifically, which cheeks? I don't know. All right, knows, after yeah. a good two minutes of Gorok just beating on this guy, it, I mean, it looks like we're going to actually take out the Nurgle faction. Right, so with Nurgle... But like, dude, freaking Gorok regens more than Nurgle? A Nurgle follower of all people? A great unclean one? Uh, yeah. Gorok's pretty insane. I love the guy. I haven't even played the game yet, and I really love him. <laughs> Nurgle's faction gone. That means we're not really at war with anyone right now, I think. Or at least if we are, we it's nobody particularly close to us, which is good. It's probably the rats Skaven are there. down here, so we are going to probably have yeah. to go to war with them very soon. But the Skaven are probably the easiest faction for us to fight because they're all infantry. <laughs> Oh, and just like clockwork, Beautiful. you must be exterminated. Thanks, Korok. I, I really needed that. Uh, wait, what? Oh, for a second, I thought the Skaven were giving me money. No, I don't. Uh, no, they want money from this you. result in war. Okie dokie. Because we don't really have any more hero recruitment capacity, what I can do is just start recruiting more lords because money is never really going to be a problem. So we can get mm -hmm. Gorm over here, the Proximal Ancient, the whose from the literal army. only purpose is just be really angry. Oh, wow. Look at this very useful more event. Babies. Do we get recruitment cost minus 50% for <laughs> 
Kings <laughs> or minus 50% for sources. Uh, yes. I don't care. Mm. Right, I know this might seem <laughs> bad. You know, the fact that we are fighting quite, quite a number of Skaven, but this fight yeah, is actually vastly like more in armies. our favor than it might seem. Three versus 4,182 <laughs> units. That's actually less than this I thought it great. would be. So we do just need to sit in the corner, wait for our reinforcements, because the truth is our units are probably never going to break. Gorok has 89 leadership, Broke has 100, and the Skink Chief might break. Okay, what, what, what are you guys doing? They're what just the? spawning random units back here now, and I think they're going to instantly get terror routed and run. Well, yeah. I mean, in a sense, this actually works out well for us because it is wasting all of their depth. What, what are what you the? doing, Master what is Assassin? The? You have made what? the greatest mistake of your life. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, I'm gonna charge in there against these four giant lizardmen. We're all super extremely powerful, and it's gonna work out. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, hmm. AI needs a little bit of work. Life. Well, I'll admit, I wasn't expecting the uh, the Skaven Lord to just walk over here and willingly get turned into a piece yeah. of glass. But hey, I'm, I'm not going to say no. I also <laughs> gave Lord Croak a bunch of barrier, which helps out pretty significantly in terms oh, of nice. him not dying. All right, yeah, and yeah. now the Lord real Croak battle begins, him. which is just the giant cluster blob fest that is going to happen over here. Either way, we pretty much just fast forward now and let all the Skaven run into one ball around our four heroes. <laughs> Uh, oh, meanwhile, this is we, gonna be know, juicy. Bombs. Oh, there man. we go. A little magical Ooh. airstrike. How many kills was that? 260. And we Holy. just broke almost every unit of the fight. Gee, I like well, they keep trying to get around us in order to surround. I mean, it's, I don't think our units have any problem being surrounded. Well, yeah, I say they don't that care. was a, uh, a pretty... <laughs> <laughs> Giga we almost man. won the fight already, okay? We've killed almost half the Skaven. One spell just completely routed everyone. We are almost out of... Well, no, we're, we're not Dude. even almost out of magic. And all of my units have taken so fun almost if you didn't no have damage. To, like, there is there still the next magic. wave of, well, the entire other rest of the Skaven army, but, you know, we're just gonna not care. Even if I use the weakest version of Lord Croak's spells, they still do a pretty crazy amount of damage. Right, well, with yeah. that one last attack, uh, Lord Croak is at 994 kills. And the Skaven are trying to stop him. That's uh, not really working out so trying. well for them. After a little bit of fast forwarding, which is really all it took, and a, a couple more spells, you know, we're up to 1,002 kills on the Lord Croak. I didn't even notice that the Skaven had a whole nother 17 units next to the city that just declined to get into the fight because they were too <laughs> they afraid. Declined? I don't think it's going to matter. <laughs> 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 they looked over the hill, they saw the absolute massacre, and were like, yeah, no. <laughs> That's great. Much though, because even though most of my guys are almost dead and they have gotten a fresh new 17 units, I think we could still siege the city down. Yeah, all right, yeah so the you plan could probably is basically still just do. deploy oh. all the ways in the side. Oh, okay. You guys talked about the improvements to the siege battles in Warhammer 3. So it looks like instead of it just being like just one straight wall and then you going in to capture a specific point in the city, which uh, uh was the case in Warhammer 2, you now have a lot of different stages that you got to go through and a bunch of towers that will be defending the city and whatnot. It looks more interesting, for sure. Uh, although uh, a, a few of you guys have also brought up that uh, while more interesting is also a bit more tedious. So uh, there's pros and cons to it as well. I guess we'll have to... To figure out how we feel about it once we experience it for ourselves. Yeah, that is uh, that, that is quite a few units. But if we can yeah. sneak up right yeah. to the side of the wall, we basically prevent ourselves from being hit by any of the towers, and then we can just break down the doors. All right, the Skaven That's AI is getting very nice. confused. Well, I'm not entirely sure what's happening anymore. I just see Skaven and and effects and things, and I'm I'm just gonna assume we're going winning. On. Five units versus five thousand nine hundred and three. Honestly, I'd say it's a little unfair for them. Right. For them. Well, I've had to yeah. pull out of the city because I'm kind of running low on Winds of Magic. So we're using Lord Croak to kite out all the <laughs> ammunition from the Skaven Slave Slinger. Not really something I thought I'd be doing in this playthrough, but uh, here we are. All right, minute 30. Give it up for minute 30. I've been grinding here for 30 minutes and Holy. I've used about 200 Winds of Magic already. Uh, Lord Croak is at 1,200 kills and Gorok has just been grinding 650 in the mosh pit. They've just been beating down every <laughs> single unit they could get their hands on and I uh, apparently creating like a singularity <laughs> oh my god that was 40 minutes of my time oh, at least in the no. in-game timer but in the end we uh we actually somehow did it and the kill counts are rather insane with everybody getting 
Yeah, you know, a couple. One of the major reasons I yeah. pick Gorrock is because all of the enemies that he tends to fight are usually Skaven at first, Skaven or Nurgle, and because those are mostly infantry-based armies, we roll over them. Okay, that's mm. kind of unfortunate. I didn't even realize that there was another Skaven faction just above us. Ah, this is my favorite part of playing Total War games. The, uh, spending 10 minutes to waste all the ranged units' ammunition. Gorrock <laughs> truly is the master of the dance. And there's another one 1.5k kills from Croak. Easy. Okay. But well, we are going to lose Oxodal here, but we did get our main capital yet. Please, it happens. please, Peggy Rogers. Don't do anything silly. Luther Harkin to our north is obviously very scary, but he does hate the Skaven, so our relations are improving? I am going to have to fight Lord Skrulk <laughs> over here, which kind of sucks because he is not an easy opponent. Oh he basically has God. an ability called the Libra Bubonicus, scary which rat. is just a point and click deal something like 3,000 damage. Kind of bad. And of course, my first act in the great battle against Lord Skrulk is to just sit here and kite nope. until he runs out of ammo on his catapult. Nope. And of course, the rest of the fight is just detonating Skrulk entire army that's cool luther but uh i'm gonna pay you three thousand dollars to go away obviously oh my god we're <laughs> at the point that i could actually just straight up auto resolve this i Wait, mean i'm not really? gonna but still yeah, because i can't Dude, prevent the that's great as Cleeper mentioned what exactly are we gonna do once we run into different armies that aren't really like melee infantry based i, I guess it's just the same strategy we just keep running back and forth until they're out of ammo and forced to come into melee range for us because, like, how else are you going to group them together, right? I don't think there is some sort of spell that would, like, you know, group everybody up together. Like, some sort of CC ability. But I could be wrong. Uh, I do know that there's no, like, terrain editing, I suppose, in uh, in battle with, like, a spell. Like, changing the topography and stuff like that. Probably not a thing. Garrison from coming at all. What I will do is just move them all the way to the other side of the map, way in the corner. Further down the line, we might not be able to avoid using garrisons because I, I can't get rid of them, but we'll see. Because right mm -hmm. now, anyways, it's literally just the Skaven scouring the trees, trying to find my one Croxagor ancient just hiding way <laughs> over here. And there we go. The squad is going to roll in now, and we will pretty much proceed to dumpster everyone. Our army is pretty good in a blob fight, as you can see, because it's pretty much oh, just... Yeah. Yeah, all AOE that's ideally and a a really, fight. really strong single entity units. I mean, their warlord over here is trying his best, but he is he is getting the gator beat down. That sounds like a Florida football play. Maybe it is. Oh no, <laughs> I'm getting ambushed by a scroll. Probably that's, is. Um, that might actually be good for me. The nice thing about having these armies of all heroes is that the AI will continuously attack into me because it thinks I'm weaker. Little do they know. Oh no, oh. wherever will these Skaven ambushers be? I see. Uh, seriously, it's it's been it's been a little bit, but. Uh, what gives? Oh, there they are. We uh, we spotted Why? them from somehow. And Gorok has got to have the best eyes in the entire right? world. This man just saw through an entire canopy of trees to see like a couple Skaven. Okay, this is actually potentially scarier than I thought it was because oh, not really? only are we fighting Skrulk's army, but apparently we're fighting a second one too. Fortunately, it only took one cast to get be okay. 800 kills. One just cast? just took out his entire army in a single spell. I have Bruh. never seen that many kills I think in a single cast of some spell that um well that was incredible all right what's cast number two gonna do I mean cast number one was 800 Ooh. okay that was you know a, a measly 400 kills but yes. that, really. and the Pathetic. very last yeah. one is potentially <laughs> okay there there was 500 kills all right great so now we can just tell both of our guys to withdraw now and he'll just surrender which is fine which is the equivalent all right finally we've gotten Gorok to level 10 I was saving up three skill points when I got here because this allows us to get his top line of skills, which gives a bit of physical resistance with perfect vigor, which mm -hmm. is pretty good. Uh, and then for this one, we will take a bunch of melee defense and then also take, finally, a mighty opponent so that he is able to basically terrify entire armies of Skaven himself because the last uh... thing we get is passive regeneration and battle yeah. killing cap plus 100%. Essentially, what this means is that Gorok will be practically immortal. Right, I'm I decided killable. to just come back and clean up the rest of the army now that... In order to get to the, the Great White Lizard perk upgrade, there was also a box before that. So I'm assuming you have to get all four of those upgrades within that box before you can unlock the Great White Lizard perk thing. 
Gorok died, as you clean up, we're doing indeed. Gorok has basically reached peak godhood in terms of physical resistance, uh, and their leaders are getting clubbed to death God. like a baby seal. Oh, let me guess, oh, another no. war declaration. Actually, what I imagine is happening is everybody thinks I'm super weak, so they're all just rushing to declare Likely. war on me. Not yeah. realizing that I'm probably, yeah, like this army right here, this looks really scary. I don't think I'm but gonna lose not. this, though. You know, I'll admit, yeah. I wasn't much of a lizardman guy, but watching Gorok single-handedly beat down several assassins and a warlord and all these infantry is kind of changing my mind. I don't even care about the dinosaurs. <laughs> I just care about the Doomslayer lizard over here. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad that Kleefer is finally seeing the greatness of the Lizardmen. Ugh, I can't even say it right. I haven't even played the game yet, and I already saw lizards riding on dinosaurs. There was no way they weren't going to be my favorites. And after that pretty easy battle, now we can go in here and get the great white lizard Ooh. to make him have regeneration and so- Actually, never mind. We don't need all four of those. I guess you just need two. So, you know, make it Gorok very close to unkillable. The upgrades, so if he was I mean. surviving beating down 1,000 people on his own, it's it's about Survive to get a whole lot more What we can also do point. now is I have started to get those level 3 spawning pools, which increases our Skig Chief capacity, meaning we can start to build an actual army. Also, that is an insane one. Hero recruit rank plus 2 in the local province. Don't mind if I do. Considering I mean, you're the only, only thing we're heroes, doing is so recruiting yeah. heroes. The fact that Gorok uh -huh, has exactly. regeneration now means that I'm at Entering battles not to just win the battle, but because we're the actually region. netting health. So we're gonna come out of this pretty small fight over here with more health than whatever we started. Oh, that's pretty bad. I didn't realize the dark elves were gonna walk over here so quickly, but Rip. well, please, please don't do that. You know what? Okay. This fight I can't really do anything about. I kind of have to use the garrison because there's no other units in the entire city. This also just so happens to be our capital, which you know would be kind of bad if we lost yeah. that. Yes, forgot that one of Gorok special abilities is that all of our units do gain barrier when they are defending. Barrier kind of functions oh. like temporary health, sort of like Protoss Starcraft shields, where it will regen whenever you're not in combat. It's only 500, but Gorok it's, is it's actually much really helpful. Defense, so. well, we've won the battle, yeah, and I, I'm not entirely sure that Rakarth can even get out. We've just pressed him against the wall with a whole <laughs> bunch of cold stun riders. Well, that was a dude. unclimactic yeah. death. Right, well, it looks like it's time for the Siege of Axodal. Rakarth under you know, something tells me that I supremacy. shouldn't walk through this door. Uh, and it's not just the four groups of rattling guns placed all around the entrance. What I will do is have Gorok just pull a ladder out of, I don't know, the ethereal Somewhere, realm. Uh, yeah. And then try to fight their leaders up here. It should be clustered enough that the Skaven aren't going to friendly fire their own units. Uh, maybe? Counting on Skaven mm, not friendly firing are is Skaven, probably though. not a very good plan, but we'll see yeah. how it goes. In the meantime, though, I might be able to just sneak my skink chiefs up here and shank this guy london style or or maybe get shot by the rattling gunners uh friendly fired i i suppose that makes sense too okay oh. on the bright side I, I just fast forwarded through that i think the rattling guns are doing a whole lot more friendly fire damage than we are all right i basically got tired <laughs> fighting the main army so i kind of just walked past them with all of our damage resistance and we're just going straight to the main victory point somehow this uh. is an easier plan than fighting the army works like a charm right so that means we can take oxodal once again which is nice because i mean the only way we're going to get an actually decent army is with lots and lots of cities to increase our hero capacities we're also getting mounts and leveling up our skink chiefs which oh, is great nice. as soon as we can get these skink chiefs up to level 18 i think it is all we need is a couple of stegodons and the game is basically over well besides the being at war with probably everyone around us thing mm. but that's a problem for later all right i am gonna go over here and ally 10 and one just bribe him a bunch of money for a non-aggression pact because he's actually taken most of the southern peninsula and his army is standing on Oxodal. If he wasn't a lizardman, I, I would yeah. be kind of scared right now. You might want to be friends. I mean, lizardman on lizardman violence is not good. But functionally, once our skink chiefs get their mounts and stuff, I mean, shouldn't it be functionally the same thing as having like a, a 20 stack, like, dinosaur army in which case yeah we'd probably be able to crush whatever comes in our path i do need to clear up all the skaven in the area right now so we'll go in and attack this army oh my god i'm realizing i don't even need to use lord croak right now gorok himself is just going to mangle all of the infantry and i don't think he's really taking any yeah, damage he's, so i'm preparing he's myself to faster watch than essentially he's this it. happening for the next 20 minutes and now he is just 2v1ing these two chieftains over here <laughs> and they're, the they're barely scratching him 
even at all. These battles are starting to end a little predictably with Lord Croak getting 900 kills without even trying. God, I keep looking through our research tree and hoping that there's there's anything that actually <laughs> helps us. Nothing and that helps you. Weapon yeah. strike plus 10% for skink doesn't affect heroes. Recruit rank for sources doesn't affect heroes. heroes Melee defense yep. for sources doesn't affect heroes. Mm -hmm. Pretty much all of the research-based stat bonuses don't do anything. You know things are desperate when you're sending your grand armies of one Croxagore ancient in one army and another Croxagore <laughs> ancient and a skink grand to beasts. Armies. I don't yeah. know if they can take on this entire dark elf <laughs> garrison and army, but it seems possible. Okay, well, it seemed possible until I realized they had a gold rank war hydra. We can probably Ooh, come over here and yeah. take out another Skaven settlement. Oh, I was gonna say hopefully, but we yeah, this is this is not even gonna be close. Step one, Gorok walks forward. Step two, so I quartered a random Skaven <laughs> army over here. So and you know it's bad when they retreat from Total only War is an easy four game. heroes. Oh, well, this is going about as I imagined it. Just three Croxagore ancients bulldozing their way through the entire Skaven army. The nice thing I love the fact that they're animated in kind of a similar way that you would expect a, a crocodile to like lunge and snap onto its opponent and start like rolling. And then they kind of made that into an attack where they're using their weapons. There's a lot of really cool and unique animations that I've seen in this game. And I just appreciate it a lot. The thing about having heroes only is that I am super rich, which is why I am going to pay these guys over here $17,000 for a non-aggression oh pack. God. I literally cannot afford to fight this army because it is all orc archer boys and boar boys. You know, I love how the Skaven cities are all hidden from view as if I wouldn't see them. I mean, I wonder who resides at the altar of the horned rat. <laughs> the first several <laughs> minutes of every siege are always delightful. It's just me Probably running to the, the side, elves. using up all the army abilities of the Skaven, and then watching Gorok pummel his way through the door with his bare hands. I also keep forgetting that our Skink Chiefs do have an ability while they're on the Pterodon. Instead of using a bunch of fancy spells, we could just they use the just greatest tactic bombs? of all, and that's just dropping a rock on their head. Well, that was oh, about as good as I thought okay. dropping a rock on someone's head would be. Alright, I am gonna peace out with Clan Spittle, because I need to deal with Skrulk over here. Clan Spittle, I think these are their last two cities. So hopefully we can wipe Skrulk out and then be done for good with him. Actually, I say that, but Skrulk has zero settlements. So as long as we can keep him from taking one relatively soon, we should be looking pretty good. Okay, well, I guess I'm just an idiot because why is Skrulk attacking with nine groups of warp grinders? And then where did Rakarth come from in order to reinforce him? Words cannot what? explain how confused I am right now. I, I brought every <laughs> single army I have here because I'm pretty sure if I go to Siege, uh, yes, we are fighting the garrison, Lord Skrulk, and the entire Dark Elf army. Well, it looks Jesus. like Gorok is going to have to single-handedly carry this entire fight and kill probably most of this army. That's right, what Gorok does. I just does. realized that Rakart's army is going to spawn over here, so if oh, Gorok is him. able to just sit here and cluster yeah. everybody into a ball, maybe we can win. Alright, Gorok, now is your time to shine against the entire <laughs> Dark Elf army. Rakart himself is the <laughs> scariest for... Well, you can pretty much see why. Alright, Korok is just standing there, just w menacingly, just waiting for the armies to descend upon him as he 1v the entire army. <laughs> Luckily, it looks like the Dark Elves are trying to just blob up around around uh, Gorok as much as possible. I mean, possible. that's good for All us. Right, Gorok, you just need to sit here and take it like a champion. Uh, I mean, he's, he's trying his hardest. Okay, we may have just gotten incredibly lucky because Rakarth is, in, I think he's just running towards the city to try to get Flying. away from us, Wait. which, I okay. mean, he was destroying us in the fight, so it, it works out for us. Okay, so there's the Dark Elves over here, sort of down with. Most of them are in the city now. They did escape, but now I need to wrap all the ways back around in order to get to this little blind spot in the towers over here. The most difficult oh, thing we have to do in out of killing all of these units is pretty much just killing Rakarth, because he is a massive damage dealer and is probably the only person on the map who can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Gorok. Just about everybody mm. else, Gorok can probably solo. We are seven. I'm guessing the reason why is because he has some sort of ability that can make his attacks like ignore defense boosts, something like that. Whereas the the normal units probably wouldn't have that. 
17 minutes into the battle and almost nothing has happened. Oh, and there we go. Just like clockwork, the second Libra Bonica's charge, we can pop 40% damage resist. And that brings us up to actually almost maxed out against the, uh, the ability. I'm also trying to unload all of my skink ammo onto Rakarth. The skinks do a pretty decent amount of range damage. And if we just dump all the ammo they have into him, I mean, he might die. Okay, never mind. I take it back. Rakarth got really, really bad about the whole thing. And now I think he wants to 1v1 <laughs> Sense. Not a good idea for him. Especially a bad idea considering the three Croxigore Ancients that are going to come help beat him down. Oh my god, we actually killed dead. him. We might be okay. able to just lure all the enemies out here slowly. <gasps> and, and there he is. Mr. Scroll Scroll is making a bit himself? of a lethal mistake. Uh, and that is allowing Gorok to clap his cheeks. Okay, and there goes Skrulk's getting torn apart by a giant crocodile. And now the rest of Skrulk's army is slowly filtering through one gap Some on the interesting wall. Decisions I wonder going what we can do with that AI. information. I didn't realize that the gate has been so damaged from friendly fire that Gorok just walks into it and it dies. Oh my god, we hit army losses. And it only took 45 minutes of Bruh. Gorok grinding through the entire garrison. Gorok ended it on full health and too. third army. He's got 600 kills. One is Rakar, three are assassins, I think three are masters, one is a blood rack Medusa, and then probably a whole bunch of other stuff I'm not even thinking of. I love to see that we won that battle and took zero losses. Lord Skrulk's faction is now dead, uh, and the best thing is Gorok can just do it all over again because, you know, his regen cap yeah, is sets between battles. So they're free to come over here and try and take the city back, but I, I don't think it's gonna work out any better than the first time. Oh, and we just got another bonus first large plus eight. Of course, even even after that siege, uh, I do have to yeah. fight the bonuses that you get when you defeat a legendary lord, right? the Dark Elves because uh, I, I didn't really wipe out their army. They just ran away due to army losses. But I'm pretty sure if Gorok could handle that times three last time, this should be very hard. Own. It's nice yeah. that even in scenarios like this, the game thinks that we're going to lose when I'm pretty sure Lord Croak himself could just beat the whole garrison. Okay, yeah, honestly? thank God. Finally, Lord Croak is level 16, which means we could give him regeneration, which will make him nice. so much harder to kill than before, which means this death stack has probably just gotten twice as good. I mean, I call it a death stack. It's it's four units. It's four and guys. And two of them are optional. Well, I'm not sure why I doubted Gorok. I went into another battle versus a whole bunch of Dark Elf monsters. Uh, and he's 1v1'd a Stegadon, a bunch of Feral Cold Ones. He's just beating the crap out of this War Hydra now. I think he killed a Dreadlord somewhere over there. And all around, he's just a, you know, friendly oh. guy who happens to kill giant war beasts for a living. I mean, it's not even oh, us winning. It's, it's just Gorok. So I just recruited another hero. This is our third Skink Chief. But I'm trying to take only heroes with humble which means hero recruit rank plus two the thing is that actually stacks so the more oh. skin chiefs and the more lords i have with humble that's awesome. i can just put them all into one province and then start recruiting like level 17 heroes which is obviously really important because our skin chiefs scale insanely well going from pterodons to stegodons to ancient stegodons so if we can recruit them at a high enough level we're just recruiting ancient stegodons for free also ricard is obviously very angry at us uh we can kind of solve that by giving him $26,000. Lots of money. Done deal. It's also probably about time I deal with this savage orc army that has been raiding my land for, I think, 15 turns. Freeloaders be gone. Well, hopefully this works out. Uh, it's our turn to declare war on the Skaven again, try to wipe out Clan Spittle. Okay, never mind. Their army is hot trash. I don't know why I thought it would be something actual, but you know, four <laughs> heroes? Yeah, that's not enough to even put a dent in Gorok. It's nice that all of the Skaven settlements seem to have the exact same layout. Out, which means the exact same blind spot on the right side. You can just That's, sit here, uh, grind out all the summons, and then slowly let Gorok destroy the entire garrison with his bare when hands. It comes to That's a lot of notifications there at the top right. Yes, I'm aware an enemy building is under attack. I uh, I gave the order. So I do have to fight this battle again. I mean, the garrison is was more injured this time, uh, but we have unlocked one of the mounts oh, nice. for our skink chief, a Stegadon. And as soon as we get him to regenerate a little bit of health, he is basically going to be as strong as Lord Croak and well, probably stronger than Lord Croak and Melee, meaning we 
actually have some kind of combat ability for once. I mean, you know, besides Gorok crushing the whole army. As you can see here with them trying to spawn in Skaven to get our back line, but you yeah. know, our back line is basically back our line, front line. They're unquote. all dinosaurs. You know what I just realized? My skink chiefs get stalk as part of their skill tree, and this one has stalk right now. It's still riding the Stegodon. That means that we could hide like six feet in front of people's faces while riding a giant dinosaur. Oh, come on, Kazarek. <laughs> Don't do this to me. That's oh, how that works. Man. Now I think I have to fight another siege battle. Uh, I have been recording for, I think, the better part of like eight or nine hours. I'm on. Oh my god. Eight or nine hours. Oh, yeah. I mean, the game lasts long. Each battle lasts even longer, simply because he's using, what, just the lords and the heroes. The amount of work Creeper puts into these videos is insane, but I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't think there's any game that I like so much that I'd be able to just sit down and play for eight hours nonstop. But maybe it's just that addicting, you know? I do remember the first time I picked up Civ Six, and I just kind of played it the entire night. <laughs> really shouldn't have done that, but I was just so into it on turn 42 oh my god yeah get what some i rest, do man. need to do right now is take out this beast bit of faction which is unfortunately <laughs> almost entirely minotaurs, which is why this fight is going to be atrocious i uh i take it back gorok literally killed the entire army 500 kills oh and he took god. out pretty much every minotaur i mean he's literally just standing there at this point being completely unfazed getting hit by a boulder <laughs> and then proceeding to just extirpate the side gore not bad gorok <laughs> Not bad. Okay, uh, I don't know how. I think right over here, but Clan Spittle just got destroyed, and that should give us our short campaign victory. Actually, no, I take that back. We need to get to 30 different settlements. So if we can occupy 30 different settlements, we will get a hero capacity plus three for all heroes. Ooh. Excuse me? Also, log victory, hero recruitment plus 10. I did not realize how good the lizardmen were for this challenge. I mean, I, I this also seems like a perfectly good time to come and just wipe out Mr. Luther Harkin I guess over here. That's like oh, unique for every faction. This is one of our first times fighting the Vampire Coast, and maybe even one unique big for every with them is that they're actually very good against our monsters. Lord, so against I mean. our Skink Chief on a Pterodon over here, and also against our leader Lord Croak, and that's because they have almost all ranged units. But the one thing that ranged units are really bad against, you can probably guess who. Looks like Rakarth is back. I mean, I have like forty thousand dollars. Just take it. So it seems like Marcus Wolfhard has made the very small mistake of stepping next to all of my armies while trespassing on my land Very small. and also while having a pretty crappy army luckily he doesn't really have any allies uh he's kind of a kind of a loser gorok just has the mass to simply bull through all of the infantry no one no one is even stopping him i'm just walking through the infantry to chase down marcus well i wasn't paying attention and marcus died good work buddy good oh, work so you might have noticed no. that a lot of turns have passed i mean i haven't really shown all that much going on and that's because i have been trying to grind out specifically getting more of these guys so as i mentioned earlier the humble trait essentially increases the recruit rank of all of the and heroes in the province it, yeah. but i've started to stack humble on all of my croxagores over here as well as all my heroes and skinks and on top of that we get access to a building called the star chamber which increases the recruit rank by another two Very the end good. result is that these soros scar veterans recruit at level 14 the skink chiefs recruit at level 13 and same with the priests and as i construct Saves more star chambers and recruit more units it's only going to get higher. Obviously, the goal is to be able to just straight up recruit skink chiefs with Skagadon mounts from the beginning. Okay. Dude, yeah, that's going to be insane if you can get a full stack of that. And the money wouldn't be a problem, right? Okay, and that is beautiful. I just checked the heroes list, and we have another humble lord right over here. So we can go ahead Very and nab nice. him at level 15. Uh, and then I have another one over another here, one? so we can grab him at level 17. Even so more. So now Sora Scar veterans start at level 20. These skink oracles, I'll, I'll actually, uh, maybe I'll grab a pompous one over here just to get another minus for leadership. Oh, that's cool. The oracle just starts on top of a giant dinosaur. And and even more insane that the oracles have healing. The big problem that we were running into with Gorok's army is that only Gorok and Croak can actually heal. Everybody uh, else healing is insanely regen, yeah. good on everybody else. The reason is because healing is generally percentage based. So when you heal a percent of this guy's max HP, which is 11,000, it's a lot of health. That's a right? lot. So I'm trying yeah. to take one of the cities from the Huntsman. And uh, this is apparently the oracle. He just starts so on cool. this mount. Plus our skink chiefs are slowly starting to get on actual map.
out and we have a literal u.s air force of skink chiefs i can literally just start the battle fly them over here and oh oh poor them their leader is flying that is perhaps the greatest oh, mistake no. they could have possibly made yeah he's he's not he gonna flies out the, here the on his own uh, then he well, gets he's certainly trying but yeah this is this is not gonna work out in his oh, favor no. so now that we've won the battle i could just group up all of my injured units into one big ball and then just start using overcast earth blood to heal them as much as i can earth blood can only target up to four people so you know it's it's not like we could just use one spell and then regenerate eight million hp i wish but even without that it's still really strong to be able to do this okay so now if we move gorok back into itza what level can we get that so we can get level 20 right right but i believe i saw another humble and another, another humble over oh, here and as great as it is there. that some of our skink chiefs are level 23 and level 20 i actually don't care and i could just disband them which should give us another slot for skink priests and that's going right into another humble yep so that brings us up to level 21 and now that means we can recruit these guys at level 20 24 level 23 level Very 23 good. level 23 which also means that every time we recruit a skink chief they are immediately given an ancient stegodon and i can also recruit score of scar veterans which immediately have carnosaurs so we're essentially at the point where we can recruit everything maxed out and even get the honored elder perk which gives control plus one for all provinces except i can get that on every one of my store scar veterans and now by putting everything into gorok's army we have created a disgusting blob of heroes that are all practically max level all right it's probably high time that i disband some of our armies because these croxagore ancients are no longer that useful i will keep our boy gorm over here nothing gets me more hype than this guy but besides that money <laughs> is actually starting to become an issue because i have one army that uses all of it oh my god we're finally getting to the point where i could fight three cygors and auto resolve without losing anything ah now these are the kind good. of battles i like to see i i mean gorok has not come this far to not obliterate some empire ass so of course it's the entire <laughs> empire army versus uh the dino squad there's also a random general coming in from behind but uh pretty sure we yeah, have him he's not gonna well, have a good time this fight is going about as you would expect with the entire army being run over by dinosaurs Gorok is having his own fun little time fighting halberds you know 150 dead ones and there's army losses i'm, I'm sorry wait is this cafe where why wait, why are you here don't you live somewhere like all the way yeah how'd they get all the way over bit, here just a tiny tiny bit more right over here i mean the only what? people it sucks for is them because i am gonna have to step over the well step well, that's on unfortunate. them in order to keep moving up the peninsula whoa marcus wolfhart uh you okay there buddy an army tailored to fight specifically mine and eh, try again you know i've started to get lazy with the battles but i'm not even sending gorok in i'm just blobbing Send up our entire in. army and moving through everything i mean come on what's what's gonna stop this plus with lord Honestly, Pro's yeah. AOE 40 percent damage resistance we just have a whole army of dinosaurs that can't die so because there's an army on the top that's probably gonna declare war on us i do need to split up our forces and of course i'm doing that by moving all of our heroes to one army form over here is under control of even lord croak and literally everybody and the second army it's there's just only gorok. gorok i am that confident <laughs> that i can just walk a over here to army. this settlement and siege oh, yeah. it down with gorok alone oh my god i could just you auto what? resolve it it's a hero you get a heroic victory on auto resolve oh my god even the game knows Gorok's power at this point. Oh, look, victory! He got a thousand kills and took no damage on the auto resolve. Marcus literally sees Gorok at the gates and he's like, okay, please, I I, I can't fight this war. <laughs> and just as I expected, the J Dragon is going to declare war on us. Uh, but I'm pretty sure our army is vastly better. Okay, I think my favorite part about this is that because Gorok has no AoE, this has been 31 minutes of Gorok clubbing single handedly. 83 yeah. people to death by hand Jesus. i am so impressed Just right run now. When which you see should him. mean that the faction of the hunts marshal is dead dead there we go okay now we just have to go over here and fight three full stacks of you one bow so i am going to turn off control large army so we can just 20 v 20 these guys which should make my life a lot easier because you know i'm the one with the entire army of dinosaurs yeah you know it's possible i didn't realize just how much more horrifying my army's gotten it's the garrison also spawns menacing. no matter what i do so we do kind of have to use them although Ooh, if i'm being well, honest yeah. uh i don't think we need them <laughs> Now, it's worth remembering that they do have some of the scariest and hardest hitting halberd infantry over here, um, which mm. is why we have Lord Crook. Yuan Bo is also just getting gooned in here. Uh, I mean, 
I think he forgot how to turn into a dragon or something. Alternatively, Badge. you can have the experience of uh, being fisted by a Tyrannosaurus <laughs> Rex. I'm actually not what? sure how that would work. But I'm... <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, uh, I think the, the Halbard units are really good against what large units they have anti-large capabilities but i don't think it's really gonna matter as Cleeper said if you just blow them up the one spell i wonder when it comes to like if you're playing cathay lords do you have to like use an ability in order to transform into a dragon or is that just like a a thing that you choose to do I'm just gonna fast forward as we move the blob forward and it just you know expected results nothing to see here people just standard normal dinosaur parade well that went about as well as i was expecting come on in guys the battlefield is very safe well you know i would kind of hate to be this reinforcing army it's not not really the ideal I need to be location. facing off against any Don't of this. Don't worry, guys. I know this might look like a valiant defeat, but we have reinforcements. We I think have what makes this so special is that he doesn't have any guy. busted trinkets or any crazy items or spells. His power level is just due to him and nothing else. Gorok is not throwing hands. He just throws the whole building. Well, to make things a little <laughs> bit easier, I'm gonna go ahead and just recruit three more of our skink chiefs, all of them at max level. Oh, look, three ancient stegot. Ah, yes, lots of, lots of mounts. You know, at this point, I'm not even fighting the armies. I'm actually just running by them because I'm just no, gonna get can. to the main you capture take no point, damage. take the city, and then win. Meanwhile, Gorok is just being shot the whole time, but, you know, he obviously does not care. Okay. Okay, we are on turn 104, and I have finally achieved the short campaign victory. Technically, I also started working towards the long the campaign, short victory campaign as well, at turn 104. But at some oh my point, god, we, okay. We, we pretty much won. I've essentially conquered everything all the way up to the Dark Elves, and pretty much everyone in Lustria is either allied with us or very dead. Not to mention that hmm. I have space for an entirely new 20 stack of heroes. Jesus, yeah. Essentially, you've reached the point where. If you continue playing, there's only really, really one outcome. You've just far surpassed every other faction, right? So I would pretty resoundly chalk this one up to a win. Beating Total Warhammer 3 with only heroes. Very possible. Beating Total Very. Warhammer 3 with only Gorok. Maybe also possible. Maybe. Big thanks to yeah, Displate for honestly, sponsoring this video. But how strong thanks that for watching. Is. See ya.